Four ways to be more transparent with your SEO clients with Taylor Kurtz. The In Search SEO podcast is brought to you by Rank Ranger, the all in one SEO platform that helps skill your business through data and analytics. It's David. How transparent are you with your SEO clients about what you're doing, how to measure its true value, and the SEO industry in general. That's what we're going to be talking about today with a man who's a contributing author to Search Engine Land and a frequent speaker at various digital marketing events. He's the founder of Crush the Rankings. A warm welcome to the In Search SEO podcast, Taylor Kurtz. All right. Thank you, David. It's an honor to be here and looking forward to uh, talking transparency. Yeah. Great to have you on, Taylor. You can find Taylor over at crushtherankings.com. So, Taylor, why is it so important to be as transparent as possible with your clients? I think it's important for just simply building relationships. You know, you don't want to, uh, I would like to consider, I don't know, I think, I don't want to be grim, but I would consider ourselves like when it comes to dogs, breeders, like we put a lot of effort in and want to do things the right way versus larger agencies, which may be more of the puppy mill, like quantity of clients over quality of clients and relationships. So I think it's important for building relationships is really the main priority for me. Got you. Okay. Well, today you're sharing four ways to be more transparent with your SEO clients. So starting off with number one, building long-term relationships. Yeah. So I've been, and and as you mentioned, I'm a contributing author for Search Engine Land, and I just actually had an article published last week about this very topic. And I think it's just transparency and communication with clients is where I really aim to set our company apart. And I really recognize that from day one, before I founded the company, just observing what other agencies were kind of doing wrong, and specifically in the communication or lack thereof, and I made it my objective, basically the company motto when I launched it, that I never wanted to hear, where's my money going? I wanted to always be clear, honest, and forefront with forthcoming with that. So to me, it's important to build long-term relationships. A, just because it's stressful, not knowing, you know, do I have enough clients for next month or next year, or whatever it may be. But more importantly, when you get a new client for a successful, in my opinion, campaign, you need to build a rapport and be a team working together, which takes time, you know. Uh, So whenever you're with any profession bringing in a new client, it takes time to get on the same page and get comfortable. So when it comes to, you know, if you're constantly forming new relationships, the bulk of your time and energy is spent building those relationships. Whereas if you can kind of go about things the right way and really cement those long-term relationships initially, your time is now spent working for them rather than working to try and make sure your bills are paid and you've met your quotas or whatever it may be. So I think the big thing is just keeping clients long-term, especially for me that once I start a project, I want to see it through. Mm. Uh, But I think that also included with those long-term relationships, not only are you not constantly looking for clients, but if successful, you'll often get new clients from word of mouth based on those successes. So I think that the Biggest thing about transparency is just building that trust, which allows you to have a long-term relationship and not constantly be looking for new clients. That, to me, is a huge part of our business. That certainly sounds good and and logical, but I I guess it's challenging sometimes because if you're approaching new clients that um, have heard about SEO, perhaps haven't even used an SEO in the past, they will have certain preconceptions. They will be told by other people that it's possible to achieve quick wins and they might not be open to have a conversation about the length of time realistically that it's going to take for something like that to happen. So um, how do you actually get a client like that on board? when they're being told by someone else uh, to expect results fairly quickly? Uh, I think that really goes, you know, for any industry, but specifically this one as well. When people come in, I always refer back to the phrase, search engine optimization when done right is a marathon and not a sprint. So of course, when I'm talking to you, I'm going to be completely honest and upfront as to, you know, in 30 days, here's what we may see, but here's what I'm really targeting in three months, six months, et cetera. Whereas when you go for these quick results, a lot of times, you're going to have great results in the first 30 days. But by the time that six month period comes around that we were originally discussing, you're going to be back talking to me because whatever shortcuts were used ends up, you know, in the long run, not paying any dividends and causing more harm than good. So I always just say it's one of those things where, frankly, you get what you pay for. And if it sounds too good to be true, it most likely is. And 
I think that, again, just educating them on why that is, what we intend to do, why it takes a while. Uh, I often provide literature, whether it's from Google or other reputable sources, just to kind of here's another voice explaining to you what, what I'm saying. So I think that just by being thorough and communicating to them, quick wins aren't always the best wins. You know, if, we're, if this is a track team and our race consists of four laps, but you win the first lap and crash and burn on the last three, wouldn't you rather be at first place at the end of it? And that's kind of the way I've always looked at it. So it is challenging because a lot of people, especially if they're unfamiliar with search, you know, a bargain is a bargain. Mm. But at the same time, you may, in some cases, get a lot more and you paid for what if your site gets, you know, blacklisted or a manual penalty or negatively impacted from an algorithm update. And then you're lower than when you started. And then we're having this discussion again. But I think just explaining to them the choice is yours. But here's realistically, you know, most likely what to expect from both point of views. Makes complete sense. Well, that brings us up to point number two, which is educate clients on the value of your services. So how do you go about educating the, the clients? Well, there's really two ways for that. But the first is really communication, especially when I start with a new client. Uh, I'll often look at their website, conduct research on the terms they want to rank for, their competitors, the standard kind of research you would do when formulating a strategy. But then I always make sure to have a thorough call reviewing the strategy. And with that, I explain Here's what we intend to do. Here's why we intend to do it. Here's what our goals are for that and a projected timeline of achieving those goals. And the reason being, there's so many agencies and, and companies out there that just you never hear from them. And every month they'll send you a report at the end of the month with here's how the month went. But you never really know what they're doing. And more importantly, you don't necessarily as a client know, are they working towards the goals we discussed? Or are they just trying to inflate numbers? things like that. So when I educate people on the why and the how, it takes a lot more time and effort on my end. But by making my clients understand that, it raises my own value. They understand, okay, he's not just, you know, writing these two blogs to say he did it. There's a very specific intent for those articles that work towards the overall goal we discussed. And I think when your client understands what it is you're doing, they're much more receptive to it and more importantly, getting feedback from them during the education process, letting, letting us know what's working, what's not working, you know, something you may want to tweak along the lines. But having that communication open instead of just saying, oh, you get X amount of organic traffic a month, we're going to double that, not explaining how the, or rhyme or reason. To me, by educating the client, it raises your own value and the value of the work you're doing, as well as the understanding of the client and going that extra distance. So if I include a report that to me, you know, total clicks out of the search console, for instance, is the focus metric, but it obviously shows the click through rate. I'm going to take, if I haven't done it before, the time to explain to the client what the click through rate is for two reasons. One, I want to be thorough and show that I'm invested in this and care. But two, I really don't want an email with those questions. I really don't like getting, as most people do, I don't want to say basic questions, but taking time out to answer something where I could have easily included it among the reports. So I think going above and beyond with the communication and in doing so, raising your own value uh, is incredibly, incredibly helpful. And that was really a big part of our business structure, I would say, is, is communicating so the clients understand the what and the why. So how often do you tend to recommend SEOs to actually have conversations with clients? Uh, I mean, you talked about you know, um, some SEOs just actually providing monthly reports and you jumping on calls. Do you actually have monthly calls? Um, if, if so, how long? Do you actually even have face-to-face? -face? Is that better? And also, how does this ongoing regular education slash communication impact the length of time that clients actually stay with you? Oh, fantastic questions. So it really varies from client to client. Uh, some clients, every month I, I suggest or request a meeting, and we may have never had a single one. I have other clients where we have weekly meetings that may go from 25 minutes to an hour each week. So it really, and those are the best clients, you know, not that we're not equally successful on the others, but of course, just in any business, when you have someone that you can show results to and they're telling you good job and you've been having these meetings for now, the case of one client almost five years every week, You've built a really great rapport. And going back to the end of your question of how does that help you with the keep clients for a long time, you know, if I'm meeting with you every week and then you, we decide, okay, here's what we're doing for the next week. I'm sending you updates on my progress and vice versa. We're all aligned on the same goal, the same vision, and we see how we're each integral in that strategy. So for instance, if I've been working with a company for four years 
and this we meet regularly, all of that. We've built a great relationship. However, so, Google changes something or something happens and, and, and organic traffic goes way down. Because of the fact that I've communicated with them and I've built that trust, they're 100 times more likely to give me a longer leash and the opportunity to rectify whatever's going on versus if we've only been working together for eight months, never really have any calls, et cetera, et cetera, and it all goes you know, to fire, they're more than likely going to ask, what happened? Can you fix it this quick or we're going to look elsewhere? You know, So I think that by having those not just frequent meetings, but just communication in general, it's really building the trust. And that's where I think a lot of SEO, uh, just clients, as you mentioned, come into a relationship skeptical, whether they've been told it's you know not worth it or whether they've been burnt in the past by a snake oil salesman giving them quick results that later backfired. So one thing I do to really kind of separate, and I do it for every client, and I really don't know if many of them, if any of them even look at it, but for every single client, as mentioned, I never wanted to hear where's my money going. And so for every client, I'll create a Google document and I'll share it with them. And they can access this at any time. And every single day, I'll put a bullet point with that date and what we did that day. You know, ran a site audit. This was flagged, cleaned it up, whatever it may be. So even if I'm not emailing you on a, you know, a daily or super regular basis, you as the client can go in at any time and see what we're doing and see that we're not just collecting a check. And I think that that is really what gives, has extend, I don't want to say extended your leash, but allowed me to form such long-term relationships is by communicating to this level where often, you know, eight times out of 10, I'm waiting to hear back from someone. I've already put the ball in their court. And I think that's really shown that not only can we be trusted, and we re, but we really care and we're passionate, not just about the work we do. If our name is on it, I want to see it through to the end and have it succeed. But at the same time, you know, we're, we do exclusivity. If I work with a grass-fed beef producer. That's the only one in that industry I'll work with. And so I very much become passionate about that project and success and on a personal level want to see it succeed. And I think just the communication makes the clients feel, which is the truth, more valued, more important than if they just, all they ever hear from you is here's a monthly report and invoice. And your third point, you say that you want to improve the reputation of all SEOs. So is that as the, the SEO industry as a whole, you want to improve the SEO industry reputation? And if so, how does that actually benefit you? So I just think it's beneficial all, all around. Like, like I said, a lot of times when you, people come to you and think it's, unless they're getting referred word of mouth or someone says, I've worked with this guy, he's great, he's been very successful for me. If they just find me or whatever it may be or find any SEO, they may be skeptical. And I'm sure a lot of people watching this are on LinkedIn. And that's a prime example. Every single day I get 10, 12 random messages, which I respect the hustle, but hey, do you need help with this? Can we do this? Can we do that? And it's all so impersonal. And so it makes it almost look like the industry is spam in some cases. Like we just cast a net on LinkedIn or wherever and reel in whatever we can get, which is really not the case, at least for, in my opinion, most of the respect to SEOs, the way we operate, et cetera, is when it comes to clients who want quality over quantity. And so I think that by being honest and communicating and leaving people with more positive experiences when it comes to SEO, those, that word of mouth will spread. And I don't think it'll ever be a positive ratio for us. There's just so many individuals across the world that can hop on a laptop and start cold calling or reaching out to people saying they do digital marketing. But for the ones of us that, not that the others don't take it seriously, but have really committed ourselves to this and more importantly, committed ourselves to our specific clients and doing things the right way, leaving them with a positive experience that they can share with people is a lot better than leaving them with a negative. And so, like I said, I think there will always be more of those, uh, I guess, I don't want to say like, in, I'll say inauthentic because they're not illegitimate. They very much probably know what they're doing, but it just doesn't seem authentic. So leaving people with more authentic experiences, good relationships built will hopefully at least sway you know, the weights of the scales a little bit more towards people having a more positive vision of SEO. And not that they don't. I just think, like you said, so many people have been sold quick fixes or sold, you know, essentially nonsense. And that may be their only experience with digital marketing as a whole, whether social media, SEO, and that for me as well, if that was an investment that I saw no return on or was a negative experience, I might be skeptical going into the next scenario. So I think that 
I, I mean, we can never improve the relationship, the, the reputation of all digital marketers, obviously. But if, if you can return, improve the reputation of, uh, you know, among your clients, that at least is a start, I would say. And then they refer, whether it's to you or other people, explain the value they've gotten from the services. It is, you know, you get a real return on your investment, et cetera, et cetera. Taking us up to point four, raise your own value and give yourself an advantage over your competitors. So, so what value are you talking about there? So a good, a good, so when I first started my niche, I started really with uh, criminal defense attorneys and I had one client, then he would refer someone to, and it slowly growed, but I was in competition with companies, which I won't mention their name or give them free publicity, but they may be operating with criminal defense attorneys in the same town as my client, but, I, but represent three of them. And it's like, that to me seems like a conflict of interest. As mentioned, I'll, I provide exclusivity. I'm not going to have you paying me more, so I'm not working as hard for this other guy who pays me less in the same area. And so but through this communication, honesty and transparency, I think we give a much more boutique, tailored and personalized experience, not just we as a company, but as a digital marketer. But through that communication, you make the person feel more important than just being an invoice number, or a client number. And so if I'm looking for any kind of service and I have someone like me who you can tell cares, you can tell keeps up on this. We want to keep you informed and we want to help you reach your goals. Versus a, an example like that other company where they want quantity of clients, not quality of clients. And so when you explain to people, you know, criminal defense is a great example. They don't want just, I mean, maybe when first starting out, but they don't want just every little person that's arrested getting, getting that case. At a certain point, they want the bigger cases, the drug charges, the homicides, things like that. And so for them, it's also quality over quantity. And so I think when you can show this transparency and show your you're getting, we are not focusing on any other people in your area, just you. We'll be telling you what we're doing. We'll explain to you why we're doing it. We'll be showing you the results. We'll be communicating with you to get feedback. You know, we'd like, in the case of criminal defense, again, more cases in this practice area, whatever it may be. I think that by offering a more personalized experience through that communication, you definitely give yourself an advantage over your competitors. Like I said, I don't want to just be one of, one of another client. I want to be the client in this area for you. And things like that. So I think that by doing that, you raise your own value because it looks, not that it looks, but you're able to communicate your efforts a lot better. Like I said, those daily spreadsheets, you can see what we're doing on a day in, day out basis for you. And no other competitors will be doing it. I've never encountered anyone that does that, not just in my niche, but across the board. And so, like I said, I'm not even sure if any of my clients really look at them, but I provide it to them. And I'm upfront and honest and, and, and from the very get go. And I think that, you know, a lot of times when you, are looking for SEO and you reach out to crush the rankings, I'll be the one to meet with you. And whereas with a bigger company or other, you'll, you'll have a project manager or a salesman initially pitching to you. And it's just not personal. Like they, and so for me, that's where I think I can really raise my own value and give myself an advantage over the competition is making the clients feel much more important and on, to my priorities than they may at another agency that's just kind of trying to grab up whatever clients they can get. So let's finish off with the Pareto Pickle. So Pareto says that you can get 80% of your results from 20% of your efforts. What's one SEO activity that you would recommend that provides incredible results for modest levels of effort? Uh, I would say just conduct competitor research often. One of my, you know, for instance, I have a client, they were had a bunch of clinics in Florida and have just moved to Ohio. The whole industry of which they operate is new in Ohio. So initially not very many competitors. But now is more so we're at the top. Now as more competitors enter the market, you know we may not be number one anymore. Maybe two, maybe three. So on a twice a month or monthly basis, I like to look at my competitors, whether an established market or somewhere we already are, very closely, and look at what pages specifically are bringing them traffic. Do we have a page similar to that? What value is that page, and how can we add that value to our own website and ideally include more helpful information? So to me. One of the easiest wins is just, you know, if you have a website and you know who your competitors are, whether you're using SEMrush, Ahrefs, something along those lines, research that and just see what are the top pages bringing in traffic and can I take that traffic? You know, a, a 30 minutes of research followed by a couple hours of writing a blog or two can provide tremendous impact, not just getting traffic to that particular page, but boosting your authority and trust around whatever subject it is you're writing and competing about. So I don't think enough people necessarily... 
most people are aware of the keywords their competitors rank for, things like that. But I think, I don't want to say stealing, but really going in and saying, this page is doing well. We don't have a page like that. We want to duplicate it, do it better, and make it where if someone were to land on this page, they'd have no follow-up questions. They have all the information they need here. And like, I, I think that alone, they say content is king, and that's a great way to kind of identify content that's working for your competitors and hopefully just snatch that away from them. I've been your host, David Bain. You can find Taylor Kurtz over at crushtherankings.com. Taylor, thanks so much for being on the InSearch SEO podcast. Thank you. It's been on. And thank you for listening. Check out all the previous episodes and sign up for a free trial of the Rank Ranger platform over at rankranger.com. <laughs>